Where are you from? Okay, so I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, yeah, I I was born in Orlando, Florida, but I moved to Birmingham, Alabama when I was six. What was your first break? Actually, the piece that I'm in right now is my first break. This is my first TV thing, first anything. Um, I did off Broadway before. Like I um, came from Washington D.C., came graduated from Howard University, and moved immediately. Fifty dollars in my pocket in New York City, and then here we are. New York City on a lead on a new show by Ryan Murphy. So that's pretty dope. <laughs> that's really actually dope. So tell me more about that show. So Pose um, takes place in the 80s and it's this space where, um, you know, individuals that are the most marginalized and um, ostracized from love uh, find love in New York City with their chosen families. And, you know, the, the show takes place in type of like, you know, the emergence of the Trump era and like, um, the ballroom scene, what happened with Afro and, and people of color, um, people tried to figure out how they were going to move and position themselves in a space where they weren't wanted. And so, um, you know, the show is all about family, all about love, all about unity uh, and a good time. I mean, it's voguing in it. You have dancing, you have like all these beautiful costumes, you have people singing. It's just, you know, it's a really, really good time. So Ryan Murphy did his thing on that one. And we did it too, so. <laughs> How do you feel about this career? Well, I, you know, it's, one thing is for sure that I was, I was brought here to do what I'm doing, which is acting, singing, dancing, performing. Um, it is hard, there's a lot of sacrifices, but at the same token, you know, anything that's worth having is not going to be easy. And anything worth keeping is not going to be easy. And, you know, um, Acting and performing and just the arts have really opened me up to figuring out who I am and unearthing who I am Which goes hand in hand with this journey that I'm on right now Like I'm in beautiful LA like with issue magazine doing the things and you know This is all things that I'm I, I love to do. I love to help people through my through my work and You know that that's what I'm here for. I'm here to serve and I'm hopefully serving through my art. So that's it <laughs> How did you decide to become an actor? How did I be some, uh, okay, so it happened in ninth grade. I was going to this public high school and, you know, I was like doing tennis. I was training to become a professional tennis player, fun fact for everybody out there. Um, and immediately after uh, I got into this, um, this public school, they were like, they had this after school drama program, which I was like, okay, cool. I've always wanted to do drama, whatever. Um, and sure enough, it was like I found my niche, like it was like a, a fish to water, you know, and through that I perform I auditioned for the Performing Arts High School um, in my home state of Alabama and the rest is history. So it's just been, you know, like that's, you know, there, there are things that you cannot hide from and run away from um, and performing is one of them. Like I thought I wanted to be an anesthesiologist, thought I wanted to be an archaeologist and then it, so all of those occupations started with A and I was like, okay, actors next. So, and here we are, doing the thing, living the dream, so that's it. <laughs> How would you describe your specialty or type? Um, specialty or type? Well, definitely a dreamer. Definitely somebody that is optimistic and, and, and prideful about the world. Um, has a very deep well of, um, you know, traumatic things that have happened to them, but through all of those things have moved forward and pressed on and found light within themselves. So. If we're thinking about superheroes, you know, light. We're thinking about, um, you know, the protagonist who has something to prove, the underdog who has something, you know, like this insatiable thirst and hunger for something. So I think that's what I describe. So, you know, that's me. Who's your favorite actor you look up to? Oh, wow. Whew. That is like two of them. So Jeffrey Wright um, uh, and Harry Belafonte, Joaquin Phoenix. I look for people, Meryl Streep, I look for people that transform and are, when I see them in a, in, a, in a show or a television series or a film, I don't know that that's them. I know that they're, you know, evolving and, and transforming. So I'm all about the, the actor that transforms because that's essentially what I hope to do and will do. Um, uh, but like Jeffrey Wright, Harry Belafonte, wow, Sidney Poitier. Wow, there's just been a lot of people, a lot of, it's, it's a lot of people, Eddie Redmayne, he's like, I guess, most current, because he's really, you know, just out here transforming and doing the thing, so, yeah, so I guess that's it, you know? What would your ideal job be? My ideal job, whew, I mean, 
Pose has been such a amazing, amazing project and an ideal dream that I haven't really looked forward to the next thing. It, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think a space in which I can perform, act, uh, and then also tell stories that I'm on the front lines of social change that are going to help the community. So whatever that is from you know, a, a activist movies or biopics about activists or a superhero like something, you know, or a dancer, you know, moving from Allentown, Pennsylvania, coming to New York. Like, it's all of that mentality. It all lines up in a line. So, ideal job, I'm doing my ideal job, so. <laughs> Do you consider yourself to be lucky? Yes, I, cons I consider myself to be lucky and blessed. There's just, you know, I moved to New York, um, a year and a half ago and the experiences that I've had in this short abbreviated amount of time um, people don't you know attain that until 10, 8, 7, 15, 30 years um, so being able to say that wow I am on national television telling a necessary story um, with an amazing young man who is teaching me how to become more free and become more open and become more loving um, I am extremely lucky I am so extremely lucky and being this great beautiful LA weather, although it's hot. Um, you know, just being here doing my, my, my dream and, and doing the work. So that's that's what I'm really, really passionate about. What advantages do you have? Advantages? Uh, I think I was always born with a level of discernment. Um, I have the advantage also of a supporting family. Um, my family is all healthcare specialists. I'm the only artist. So it was just like, they were like, okay. Well, we all know, okay, you're the artist, you want to dance, you want to act, you want to do this. Um, but we don't know what that is, so we're going to just support you anyway. Um, and being able to, you know, be wrapped in that love, I think that has really set me off to, you know, live my wildest dreams and want to do what I want to do. So I think that's my advantage is discernment, determination, and my family, you know. Would you rather have a car or a diploma? Oh, a diploma. Child... A diploma is something that you that that is that is um that is invaluable. You know, I I think the reason why I think the reason why I got my job is because um, of my my university and with such how much passion I spoke about Howard University. Um, it's the place where I found me. So a diploma definitely you can walk in some place and use those tools in a lifetime. So absolutely. How do you feel about how interconnected the world is becoming? You know, I feel good about that because as, as, a, as a universe, as a human race, the things that make us different are our superpowers. And I believe that, you know, as a young um, nation, you, the United States, and then also merging with all of these, you know, these mother nations, um, and just seeing that there's so much beauty in what makes the United States of America and what makes the world, we're united. And so... I love that and you know my show like Pose is really really doing that work right like we see people that we might not necessarily identify with um, we might not be trans we might not be LGBTQ you know I a all of that part of that community but there's this common thread of family and common thread of seeking love and wanting to be loved that I think we can all learn how to deal with so I'm definitely that's, that's the type of work that I love talking about, you know? We're becoming so interconnected that it's turning into a melting pot of beauty and culture and love and passion. So let's continue to do that. Especially with this Trump administration. They need to stop. We need to have that. We are all here. We're not segregated. We are integrated. So well, we can talk about that. That's another question. Okay. <laughs> what does the future look like to you? The future... The future is female. The future is people of color. The future is um, all the marginalized, ostracized people getting their due and, and getting their rights. Um, the future looks bright and the future is colorful. That's what the future is to me. So, How do you feel about having children? Oh, I know that when I have a child, it's, that's it for me. Like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, um, what's that thing called? I'm like, I, I love children so much and I love my siblings, I'm the eldest of four. So like, I know that a kid, I would just zone in on that kid and, and, and love and make sure that they are, you know, afforded all the opportunities that I was and wasn't afforded. So yeah, children. That's why I'm not having any right now because when the, the, the time that I will have it on down 20 years from now, maybe 30, um, I'll be able to just give them the world and that's the point, so. 
what challenges do you feel the world is facing today? I feel that we are experiencing a time in which we are try we are being asked to be segregated and to um, not believe truth and authenticity um, and, genu and, genu and generosity. I feel like as a people, um, we have so much to give um, and we all have different skill sets and you know, the, the, the political climate universally is just asking us to ostracize ourselves. So um, I think that's our obstacle is not giving in to that negative place, that negative space, but really tapping into what makes us who we are. Um, so, you know, I, I, I pray and I chant and I meditate on those things that we need because that's going to make us like, that's going to take us to the next level. It really, will, really, really will. So. What are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful for the opportunity to to live and to be happy and to follow my dreams. I think that that when somebody has a great a great thing, a great dream, a great passion inside of them, and they're not given the chance and the opportunity to express that, you know, you've you've, you've killed the person. Um, and so, you know, having this having this opportunity and having multiple opportunities where I've always been reminded that I'm on the right track, that I'm in line with my purpose, um, that's what I'm most grateful for. The people, the, 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 the experiences that have shaped me, the trials and tribulations, all of those things I'm extremely, extremely thankful for because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be all who, who, of who I am and who I'm becoming. So I'm really, really appreciative of that. So, What is your favorite way to communicate? My favorite way to communicate is, oh, I hadn't thought about that one. That's a good question. Favorite way to communicate. I guess it would be through like music. I really think that music has the power to communicate messages and, and, and situations and art, like just art, art, whether it's film, that medium or music, I feel as though I love to sit, watch a piece of art, or listen to a piece of art, and then have discourse about it, and see how that works in my in my life. How you know it is merged. So I guess art discussion, art discourse, being in a round circle, kumbaya in it up, talking about love and light. And that's kind of like me. I just love. I love that. I love to forward, progress, move forward, and any conversations that we have that are moving us forward. And that, that's where I find love, and that's where I want to be. So. What is your favorite book, film, and music right now? Book, film, and music. Um, surpasses, sur surpassing Certainty, um, my, uh, Janet Mock's book, um, uh, one of our producers, that's the book. Movie, Call Me By Your Name, I think, um, because Italy is like my dream place to go, first off, and then just the complexities and, and the nuance of that story, how they, let, how they let the story breathe, that was brilliant to me. Um, and then, what was the last one? Music. Music. So I'm really feeling her, H-E-R, and also I've just been like getting really, really into again over and over uh, black coffee. Like I'm, I'm, I guess because I'm voguing on at work every day, and it's just like those beats and the house beats and like just that. And I'm also like finding my New York, my New York er in me. Like it's just very like there's this just this undercurrent of soul and merging all different forms just in that realm. So definitely black coffee. Her just mellows me out, like lets me go into another world. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs>